my whole life. I love I'm to cook. To I can pretty much drink anything, okay? But there's only one recipe I use. It's theirs. Union Oysters. It's on Union Street. It looks like this, okay? It looks like, like this. You want to get it in a bread bowl, okay? Get it in a bread bowl. You know why? You can get long hair system. You get your face right in there like this, okay? You hear everything. And then we, uh, you put a lot of heavy, there's a lot of heavy cream in it. There's a difference between us and California. We believe in high cholesterol, okay? So my cholesterol, I don't know if this is bad, is 9,650, okay? If I cut this out, I wouldn't believe it to next week. But you want to get it in the Union Oysters. Take it to another level. If you go to the Union Oysters, you go to table number 18. It's a cool thing to do. It was built by President Kennedy, all right? It's very, it's a presidential chair. It's really cool to do. Just, I've done it a bunch of times, and I'm a Bostonian, I do it, okay? Anyway, Union Oysters. Right next door to that is the Bell and Hand Tavern, the oldest pub in America. Why do they call it the Bell and Hand? Because during the colonial days, we had a guy called James Wilson. In order to grab people and read the news, like taxes and all this, he would use the bell and do this. Hear ye, hear ye. I think the guy had a dog named Ye. He was trying to find him. So, it's called the Union Oyster. See that statue on that brown base? You know what that is? That's Alexander Graham Bell. This is the Verizon building. It's right here where he invented the telephone in 1876. That's another thing we invented. We invented the telephone. See, we invented everything, okay? Now, what else are we famous for? Lobster rolls. We love lobster rolls. Let me give you a name of them. That's a real, you like lobster rolls? Your dad likes them? Okay. All right. Try to go to a place called James Hook Lobster Company. James Hook. It's on the corner of Northern Boulevard and Atlantic Avenue on that side. It's literally a mile from here. Uh, if you go in there and you ask him what's the largest lobster he has in his, uh, inside his bins of lobsters, he'll take him out and get a picture with him. I see 10 to 12 pound lobsters over there. Pretty cool stuff. So that being said, now, if you look over to your left, see this building with all the little windows? That's City Hall, voted as the ugliest city hall in America, okay? <laughs> not by me, by the American Institute of Architects, not by me, okay? Now, who likes tea? Look to your left to see a tea kettle. See that tea kettle? That's called a pictogram. Oh. A lot of people can read back then, so you put a symbol what they were selling. That back then was called Ye Old Starbucks. That's the name of it, right? Now, the one thing I like to tell people all the free things that you would boss, very important to know the free stuff. For instance, the King's Chapel Burying Ground, 1630. Inside of here is a woman called Mary Chilton. She's the first one to step foot up the Mayflower in 1620. These are all free to visit. The Boston Cream Pie, our state dessert, was invented at the Omni Parker House to your left hand side. Yes. Now, get ready to have your minds melted. Coming up, the Great Lee Burying Ground, 1660. Look at this green headstone over to your right, that's Sam Adams right there. Now look to your left, the Beantown Pub. Look back to Sam Adams, Beantown Pub, Sam Adams Beantown Pub. That's wow. the only pub in the world you can drink a cold Sam Adams or looking at a cold Sam Adams. <laughs> in this burying ground is Samuel Adams, Robert T. Payne, John Hancock, all signed the Declaration of Independence. Paul Revere is better than there with two of his wives and many of his children. He has 16 children. He outlived 11 of his 16 children. Directly in the middle, there's a big tall one there. Can anyone make that name out on, on that? What does that say? The big tall one right in the middle. There's a tree by there, but it's someone that used to fly a kite. Oh. Benjamin Franklin's family. Benjamin Frank, uh, buried in Philadelphia, but he was born and raised here in Boston. So we invented electricity. So, you take a look to your right hand side. You see that green headstone? That's James Otis, who said taxation oh. without representation is tyranny. Now, coming up to your right hand side, this is Green Area. This is called a PAHK. It's a park, okay? It's called the Boston Common, the very first public park in America, 1634. You see what this, see what says Green Line train right there? So, this is the very first transit system underground in America, 1897. So, in New York, above ground is 1896. Below ground is the fourth oldest in the Western Hemisphere, from London, Glasgow, and Budapest. The Green Line, you know why they call it, make them why they call it the Green? Because if you were to take a helicopter over Boston, there's nine parks connected up and they're called the Emerald Necklace. Designed by a guy oh. called Frederick Law Olmsted. Who's that parks in North Carolina? Frederick Law Olmsted, look them up. Atlanta, Georgia, all over Florida. Buffalo, New York, Central Park, New York, Lincoln Park, Chicago, UCLA. 
The red line is red because it goes to Harvard. Harvard's red. Blue line, it goes to Harvard. Silver line, airport. And the orange line's name of the uh, street used to be called Orange Street. If you take the red line train to Harvard, it sounds like this. Ding, ding, you know, I'm at Harvard University. Do us up on your right. You take the green line. Oh, my God. It's horrible. The worst sound system in the world. I can't make it up. It sounds like this. Ding, ding. Duck, says. I was end up in North Carolina from this train. Okay? It's weird. Uh, who's ever heard of the Freedom Trail? Okay. Check it out. See that house over here to your right hand side? So if you start from there, you follow a red line like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, and you go two and a half miles, and you end up at the Bunker Hill Monument. 16 stars, 12 of them are free. So where are we now? This is what Boston looked like in 1625. You're in it. This was the Charmin Peninsula. Boston was only a mile and a half wide, and you're in the oldest part. Boston's original name was called Charmin, because the living waters were the Gonkin Indian tribe. And one guy lived here by himself from 1625 to 1630. His name was William Blackstone. They say he never wore clothes, and that's my dream. And in 1630, <laughs> 150 Puritans show up. You know where they were from? Boston, England. And that's why they called it Boston. In fact, in England, it was called St. Boltoff. And they dropped the Saint, and they said Boltoff, and eventually Boston. And that's how you get Boston. Very simple, okay? And just to let you know, Boston was only a mile and a half. Check it out. I've been learning how to do uh, uh, meters. Basically. Originally a mile and a half, and I converted it into meters. Carry the one, okay. 2,000 Celsius, okay, right here, okay? So, I'm gonna get oh. really good with this stuff. Now, let's say you want to send that, your son to college, right? This is Emerson College, a theater art school, communication school, writing school, and film school. They now, you can send him to college one day. For 250 grand to Emerson College for stand-up comedy. Yes, they offer a four-year college degree in stand-up comedy. After 250 grand, you're gonna find out it's not that funny after four years. Okay. Now, this is where we're coming next. Around the corner is a set of statues called the Make Way for Duckling statues. This is that children's yep. book in 1941 by Robert Nikolsky. Famous set of statues. Duckling's eye was Mrs. Mallet and Jack Cack Lack Mac Knack Oak Back and Quack. Okay. What's that state tree? The American elm. I state flower, the mayflower, insect ladybug, juice cranberry juice, berry cranberry. I state wild birds, the turkey. I state regular bird, Larry bird. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the chickadee. It was the chickadee, my bad. Uh, no, I state artist is Norman Rockwell. Who's heard of Norman Rockwell? He was the man, right? Beautiful. I have a bunch of his stuff at my house, right? Okay, anyway. He passed away like 50 years ago. But if you want to see the Norman Rockwell Museum, it's about two and a half hours out of Boston. Every year, my wife drives me out there. He hasn't painted anything new, okay? Why am I going out there every year? And I'll tell you why, guys. You better listen up. Because right next door to it is the world headquarters for Yankee Candle. You'll spend 17 hours in a candle factory smelling 17,000 versions of vanilla. I have more candles in my house than that creepy mother from that movie Carrie, okay? I'll just the funeral parlor, okay? It's awful. Ooh, Yesterday was the sun. anniversary date in 1908 that this yeah, that's bright, was sun. called the Porsche School of Law. Porsche School of Law was the first female law school in America. In 1908, women come out lawyers, but they couldn't vote until 1920. Right? So the men sent the school in 1932. You look in front of it, see the word garage? No. See that little sign straight ahead? No. You know what that is? It is. Garage. But that used to be a nightclub called the Coconut Grove Nightclub. In 1942, it only held 300 people. Boston College lost to a uh, football team called Dartmouth. They had a big celebration in Boston. They looked the other way and they had 700 people attend a party. 400 over capacity. They allowed them to decorate the sounds with silk sheets. 1942, a sailor and his girlfriend wanted the alone time. He took the light bulb out of the socket, put the light bulb down on, on, a, on a table. About an hour later, a 15 year old boy, a waiter, comes by and wants to put the light bulb in. He couldn't find it, so he took a lighter and he lit the sail on fire. Oh. Within six minutes, they say 300 people got away, 350. This will be because the exit doors push pushed, pushed in. That's why it's the exit doors push out. All revolving doors have two exit doors as well. That's how you get that, okay? Now, Edgar Allan Poe, does anybody know where he was from? Yes. No, Boston. I wouldn't have asked that question if I was from Boston. He was born behind the building. At two years old, his mother died and his father came up for adoption. He went to Virginia, eventually Baltimore, 
We wrote the Raven, John Jim Hart, and many others, right? You know, he's the first true crime detective story writer. All cops that they wrote to Sugar, to Longfellow, they did not like him because he was too dark of a writer, right? So, um, they crashed him. Well, we built a statue of him over here. You're right, right after the school bus. Take a look. You'll see a statue of him right there with the Raven, John Jim Hart. Now, over to your left. So, you see the street here? This is called Charles Street. It was the Charles River. One is by land, two is by sea. April 18, 1775. This is where the British soldiers left from. Because this was the Charles River. Starting 1830s, they built the very first public botanical park in America. Has anyone been in this park yet? Have you noticed the squirrels? They're very aggressive. All right? If you're eating a sandwich, take a look on a bench. A squirrel will come down on a piece of rope or camouflage. They'll try to steal your wallet and your sandwich. So this is the very first public botanical park. You know what happened? There's a tree for every state in the nation over here. Every state. Yes, including California. Big, yeah, you'll see it in there. The, the big tree. In fact, every single tree is also international trees, but every tree is labeled in Latin. Now, I don't read Latin because I've never been to Latin America. If you look over your left hand side, you see this statue. I make mean, rubber duckling statues to your left hand side. There they are. Yeah, as I say, a very famous uh, set of statues. You see them over there? That's Mrs. Mallon and Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Mac, Oi, Peck, and Quack. You know what said Mrs. Mallon? Where's Mr. Mallon? Well, he had a problem with the drink. <laughs> he would hang out at the Cheers bar. Who remember the TV show Cheers? You ever hear Cheers? You know why you never heard of it? Because it was filmed back in the 1900s. Okay, so. Um. Take a look to your right hand side. 273 episodes, all filmed in California. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Hey, let's see if we get someone to wave at us. Watch this. Hey, no! So there we go. Who's ever seen the movie The Notebook? It wasn't filmed here. I just want to let you know I cried. Has anyone ever seen Rocky? Rocky. It wasn't filmed here. I cried as well. But if you take the movie like The Notebook about love and dedication and Rocky finding that true friend to pick you up when you're down, you can buy both movies and get one of the best movies ever filmed. The combination of The Notebook and Rocky. Film right here. It's called Ted. A beautiful romantic <laughs> love story. It's an Amanda teddy bear. What a movie. Now, we were on the first street here in the back bay. This is called Arlington Street. The letter A, three silvers running south. The next one is Berkeley, the letter B, two silvers running north. All these streets in alphabetical order. Three and two syllables, A through L, south and north. Arlington, Berkeley, Arlington, 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 Ipswich, Jersey, Kilmarnock, and Lansdowne. The British Lords that supported the American Revolution. Here's George Washington, right there. Now, he's on the $1 bill, right? Now, look to your right. Alexander Hamilton, he's on the $10 bill. They call this... If you want to meet somebody, you just say 10 1. 10 and 1. That's what it means. Now, how do we represent Arizona, Hawaii, and Florida? The palm trees. They put them in in June. See them behind the sides of George Washington? And they take them out by the end of August. Right? That's how we recognize the three states over there, okay? Now, as we drive through here, just to let you know, we are going to be going by a street called Newberry Street in a second, okay? And Newberry Street has 300 stores. Bookstores, galleries, restaurants, shoe stores, yep. Jewish shops, shoe stores, Jewish shops, shoe stores, Neiman Marcus, Sachi Coats, Gucci Armani, Burberry, yep. Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Valentino, Brooks Brothers. Now there's a, uh, there's a store over there called Giorgio Armani. You want to save money? Go to his cousin's place, Salvation Armani. Okay? <laughs> it's about six blocks away, okay? Uh, if I go up about eight blocks that way, you'll notice how beautiful it is up in that area. The sun shining, see how beautiful it is? You know why? Because on April 19, 1912, we moved the sun out of the sky here. We moved it this way. Why? You shine over Fenway Park. The whole thing of people. The one thing of the whole thing of people. It's so magical, so beautiful, so romantic. If you look at it in the sky, you'll see three things about Fenway. Unicorns, double rainbows, and Skittles fall from the sky. It's been compared to the Taj Mahal, the Great Wall of China, Stone Edge Nick, and the Bermans of Egypt, and the Mayan ruins. I once went up to Fenway because I used to wear prescription glasses. I touched the wall at Fenway. 60-60 vision, right? <laughs> I broke my arm last last night. I was in a cast. I wrote the Fenway this morning. Look at it now. It's healed. Okay, so now, who's ever seen the waterfalls in Hawaii? Who's ever seen the Bellagio in Vegas, the waterfall? Who's ever seen Niagara Falls? What you about to see is one of the best water features in the history of mankind. People from around the world will come here and just take photos of this thing. Are you ready to see this amazing Incredible water feature that's probably going to make you cry because it's that beautiful.
trying to look at it, squinting like Clint Eastwood, because it's too beautiful. <laughs> you see these blue awnings coming up? There's a set of bushes at the end, right after it says exhale, okay? Look at this water feature through these bushes. Just, I'm, I'm going to be quiet because I want you to take it in, right through these bushes to your left. Look at this water feature. on your right, at the next to the light. Trinity Church, the only church in America, voted by the American Institute of Architects as one of the top 10 buildings ever designed in our country. It's since number seven. Now, now, David Ortiz from the Red Sox got sworn into the Hall of Fame. We love that. But, my favorite bass player of all time was Theodore Williams. Ted Williams, the splendid splinter. The John Hancock Tower was built in 1977. It affects the wind at Fenway Park meaning the ball is put shot on the right field. Ted Williams is a left-handed hitter. If they had that building when he played, he would have smashed Babe Ruth's record by about 300 home runs. That's how much he pushed the ball out. Okay? And I love David Ortiz. It's just that Ted Williams also missed five seasons of baseball for the service of his country. He's also in three Hall of Fames, the Fishing Hall of Fame, the Flight Hall of Fame, and Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. He flew in 39 combat missions in the Korean War. Who his co-pilot was? John Glenn, the astronaut. A lot of you don't know that. I'm a walking encyclopedia. If you want to know anything about Red Sox, I have a walking encyclopedia. No one come even close to me on, on the history of Fenway Park. Okay. What's that? His last hit 400. He, was, uh, he had that battle average of about 406. Good to hear that's good on average, something like at least. Fifties, okay. <laughs> Left-handed hitter. But he once argued with an umpire. He got struck out the night before. He argued with the umpire. He said, you know, you keep your blind as a bat. So they had a big argument. He threw him out of the game. The next day, that umpire was at batting practice. Ted Williams goes, hey, you think I'm blind as a bat? And the umpire goes, uh, you're accusing me? He says, I'll tell you what I'll do. He pulled out a pistol. He aimed about 300 yards up, and he hit a pigeon in right field with a pistol. And that's how great his eyesight was. True story. Ted Williams. Luke team left. Get ready. Fish on! That's what you guys say. Quack, quack. You guys are awful at this. Let's try it again. Vision! All the furniture from the front lawn was designed in Europe that was on the Titanic. Six months away in 1912. It's also where they filmed that TV show for kids, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Just saying. It now, is. It I'm going to write a new movie, The Titanic 2, where it opens up with Rose. She's in prison because there was enough room for Jack on that piece of wood. Okay? It's been bothering me for years. Now, one thing you need to do. Megan, since you live here, you belong to this library. It's an absolute must. You gotta get in there. You gotta get a library card. It's free. That is the second largest free lending public library in America. It's also a presidential library at John Adams. An incredible art museum and gallery. Look at the names underneath the windows. See those names? Those are doctors, lawyers, philosophers, book authors. Uh, my favorite philosophers over on the front wall on the left. I don't know if you guys ever heard of a guy called Socrates. This guy was awesome, okay? I don't know how you guys pronounce it, but it's so great to me, okay? You got a great view of the Trinity Church, 1877, by Henry Hawks and Richardson. They call it Richardesque and Romanesque. How beautiful the church is. Now, the finisher of the Boston Marathon is 100 yards up to your left. You know the Boston Marathon is the oldest continuous marathon in the world? Continuous, meaning it's been running since 1897. In 1897, you know how they started the race? With 15 runners. They started with an actual gun. And yep. only 14 finished that year. But it's been running since 1897. 30,000 runners run the marathon every single year. 30,000. It runs on the third Monday of April, known as the first shot heard around the world, Patriots Day. Right? Did they run it during COVID of April 2020? Yes, they did. They, they did. did it virtual. I signed up and I won online. Look, that's me running the marathon at home. Look at that athleticism. I got a Gatorade and everything, okay? Now in Boston, we're gonna bang a right, okay? We're banging a right here. You bang a left, but you bang a U-E. That's a U-turn, okay? I'm banging a right on the Boylston Street. As we come down here, in a moment, I'm gonna show you with MIT. Who's heard of MIT? Almost at went the next there. next set of lights. You wanna see a building at the next set of lights that actually has the gold frames around the windows. 
is building up here at the next set of lights. That's not MIT. That used to be MIT in 1861. It moved to Cambridge in 1916. Not the building, the location. It was called the Boston Technical College. And it moved to Cambridge in 1916. Now today from the water, I will show you MIT. But a lot of people don't know what it stands for. Does anybody know what it stands for? Yes. MIT. Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Institute of Technology. Yes. yes and no. You're right and you're wrong. Because the way we pronounce it is millionaires in training. Okay? <laughs> and I'm going to show what MIT is, young man. Okay? From the water. Now I'm going to have to apologize. I'm going to use big words when I get down there. Words such as hypothesis, flux capacitator. I won't put you on gigawatts. Okay? You, you know I sometimes go to MIT. You know what I do? I dress up as a custodian. Yep. At nighttime. Yep. And I see an equation on a chalkboard and I'll answer it. What movie? Good Will Hunting. Young man, have you ever seen Good Will Hunting? You haven't seen it? Look at me. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. I'm telling you it's not your fault. Okay? Now, by the way, uh, the Celtics, our basketball team, they lost to that team where you're from. Yeah, I don't know. Golden State Warriors, congratulations. Yeah, all right. So, anyways, if they have won, the Celtics, they've been using these duck boats. All championships, they use duck boats. Our company owner is named Cindy Brown, an amazing woman, CEO. She donates 28 duck boats to all the championship parades. Doesn't charge them. Doesn't charge the organizations. She pays for the payroll for the employees to be able to drive these. I've driven a lot of them. See this red one right here? That's me driving the last championship parade with uh, Tom Brady. I got to select Tom Brady. I didn't select him. I got selected to drive him. I called my wife at 6 in the morning. The parade begins at mid uh, during the daytime at 12. I called, honey, I got Tom Brady. You know what she said to me? Is Giselle coming on board? First thing she says. So here we are. I'm in the parade. 1.5 million people. Here's Tom Brady waving out the window. And here's Giselle. I promised my wife I wouldn't look at him. But I saw her. I look in the mirror and my eyes catch hers. And all of a sudden her hair is flowing in the wind perfectly. And there's a light like this. And I saw angels above her head. I heard music. And all of a sudden I look at Giselle. She looks at me. She starts doing this to me. She's winking at me. I said, is Giselle winking at me? I thought it was a magic thing. The whole way around, I could feel the tension between us. So at the end of the parade, I said, Giselle, let's go for a walk and talk about our feelings. We walked around, and this is why Tom Brady left for Tampa. This is why he left for Tampa. Right there. This is this controversial photo of us two. That's me and Giselle. That's not Scotch tape. Of my, that's not Scotch tape. That's really me. Okay? That's me and Giselle. Now, here's the other side of this park. This is called the Public Garden. Uh, all these statues in the city of left, these are brave men that spoke out against slavery. Because Massachusetts was the first state to abolish slavery in 1780. Today we're going to go into a neighbor called the Beacon Hill neighborhood. Megan, you live in the Beacon Hill neighborhood? Because you know what they say, if you live in this one of the five most expensive neighborhoods in America, if you live here, you've made it in the world. I don't want to brag, but I live 62 miles south of here, okay? <laughs> one parking spot in this neighborhood, parking spot, sold for $375,000, eight feet long six feet wide yep very expensive very exclusive neighborhood okay uh this neighbor's only lit up one way gas lanterns they've been lit since 1912 they still lit 24 hours a day not only that at the top of beacon hill you must find the state capitol building yep. there's 22 capital uh, state houses that are gold why are there gold state houses out of 22 states out of 50. presidents exactly it's a bragging statement it's not a law it's not an ordinance it's just that complimentary thing that presidents came from your state. So, how many presidents came from Boston, Massachusetts? Four. Can anyone name any of them? Go. Kennedy? Jo nope, George Washington came from Virginia. Nope. John Adams? John Adams, JFK, there's another John Quincy Adams, right? And there's one more no one ever gets. George Herbert Walker Bush came from Milton, Massachusetts. He went to Milton Academy, all right? Now, here's something off the top of the state house. Who's ever seen the movie Glory with Matthew Broderick and Denzel Washington and all five kids that fought in the Civil War? That movie is the only movie ever made in the history of movies that's 100% pure accurate, 100%. Because the old historical society of Massachusetts sat on top of that project. Today I'm gonna share the Robert Gulshaw Memorial of the 54th Regiment, all right? So we're gonna be going up Beacon Hill. Now let's quack for a second. Let's get this down right. All right, here we go. Fish on! Take it up one more notch. Fidget! Listen, people. To get this job, for me to get this job, I went to nine years of high school. 
okay? Yes, so I'm very proud of that, okay? So, we're gonna be quacking. The reason why we're quacking now, because believe it or not, this neighborhood it had an ordinance, an ordinance, that said that duck boats can't quack on their neighborhood. I kid you not. We call them duck coast intolerant, okay? So, all right, who likes Dunkin' Donuts? Who likes Starbucks? See the Starbucks right here? That was the first one in Boston, 1994. What did that Starbucks invent? They invented the Frappuccino. That's where the Frappuccino was invented, right there. So we invented coffee, thank you. Okay. Yeah. See the wrought iron? That's called Boston Lace. The glass over the doors, that's called eyelash glass. Now look at the lanterns. Those are gas lanterns. Absolutely beautiful neighborhood. See those guys painting that door? You can't paint unless you get permission from the Snow Society. These streets are so fancy. Look, they don't want you down there. They got signs, do not enter. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this young lady from California, right? San Francisco. It's gonna get weird for a second. You're from a hot weather state. North Carolina, it gets hot. Check it out, look to your right. It's gonna get weird for a second, North Carolina, California. See right there, they got I a little fountain. I was waiting for a mask where you were from. But during the winter, this one gets weird. They freeze the water. It's called ice. You've probably never heard of this. And what it is, it's frozen water, okay? And then you can rent out these boots. You gotta Google this. They got blades on them. It's called ice skates, okay? You gotta Google it, all right? That's an ice skating ring from late November to March. And all the trees light up Christmas colors. And uh, it's pretty cool. Really cool. Yeah. This house here with the block, single blocks here. That's called the Tudor Mansion. Mr. Tudor figured it out in the late 1800s how to uh, uh, send ice internationally. He wrapped it up in uh, uh, sawdust and he got it free. Sawdust was free. The ice was free because he got it from a frozen pond and he shipped it over to India and all throughout the Caribbean. The problem is when they got it, they had no idea what it was because they'd never seen it before. All right? He made millions of dollars, millions and millions of millions of dollars. He's the first guy to have the first license plate in America. And his limo driver was the first license uh, limo driver. He was 11 years old. 11 years old, yeah. He had no age restriction. Here comes our state capitol building. It begins with a statue of JFK running the marathon in a suit. Ask not what your marathon could do for you. Ah. Here's the state capitol building. And over to your right, the Robert Goshaw Memorial, the 54th Regiment. Those trees, the American elm trees, planted by John Hancock. Why? Because John Hancock used to live in this area to our left. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of uh, assembly and uh, separation of the church and state comes from one woman. Right behind the structure, you see a statue of Mary Dyer. She was hanged on the gallows as a Quaker in 1660. John Adams wrote the Constitution of Massachusetts where he put in those four amendments, eventually adopted in the United States. Now, this street here is called Bowden Street. If you look over to your right, you'll see a very famous address. 122, see if you guys can see it. 122, right behind the truck, right after this truck, you'll see it. 122, right there. Third floor up, apartment number 36. What is that? It's an Airbnb, but it's an important one. That's the official address for the day he was assassinated, President JFK and his driver's license. Okay? You can stay in there, that was, that's, a, that's an Airbnb. You know that JFK, after every sentence, he would do this? Since they went to your left hand side, this is part of the Underground Railroad with Harriet Tubman. Philadelphia was the largest, boss was second for slaves and enslaved people who escaped the South going to Canada. We also had a preacher in this name called Lyman Beecher. Lyman Beecher had a daughter called Harriet Beecher Stowe from Hartford, Connecticut. She wrote the book Uncle Tom's Cabin, second most sold book in America, next to the Bible. Now, Dunkin' Donuts, over to your left, you know what that one sells? Sushi. What? You gotta try it, man. Get yourself a hot cup of coffee, you get a piece of raw fish, put it in that hot coffee. You gotta try this, right? Then you drink the hot coffee, take that sushi out at the end, it's like a warm gummy bear. It's delicious. America oh. runs on it. So where do you guys live? Durham, North Carolina, and you? Cambridge? Okay. So she's part of Cambridge. Uh, you, oh, you with anybody? Right there. She's from Cambridge. You know what Cambridge calls themselves down there? The People's Republic of Cambridge. That's their nickname. They're going to flag and everything. Right? Now, 
I just want to let you know something. We nickname everything around Boston, right? We nickname everything, okay? So get my phone ready now. You see that church? That's called the West End Church. That was part of the Underground Railroad, right? But if you look over to your right, let's have a call it up here. You look over to your right hand side. This building is called the Charles Hurley Building. But its nickname is called the Corduroy Building. Looks like Corduroy, right? Doesn't it? No. Has anyone ever seen, I'm trying to find out my thing. Has anyone ever seen the movie The Departed? The Departed. The, you see it? Yeah, that was my son's favorite movie at four years old. Love that movie, okay? He was, he was almost fine, okay? It's about an Irish gang called Whitey Bulger. As an Irish boy growing up, 13 brothers and sisters for real, man. I was the youngest. Everybody knew him. Let's put it this way. You wouldn't have a conversation with him, okay? He scared you, okay? Yeah, well, Huh? Your mother grew up in Southie. Well, great neighborhood, by the way. Very family oriented. But people knew him. You just talked to him. You're just afraid of him. Now, I want you guys to look at something on my phone. See if you guys see this frog. See the frog on my phone? No. If you guys can see it. Look at the end of the building. You'll see the frog's head sticking out. Looks like It looks like Bart Simpson. You, I you guys can see it. See it? Why is there? Yep. You, you no. Have you ever been by this building? Have you ever noticed that frog? Once you see it, you cannot see it. Okay. That's it. You're in. You're in. Okay. Why is there a frog over there? I don't know. It makes me nervous. Look at. I was driving one of the duck boat captains. She's talking about a frog. What is she talking about? Okay. Now, I have one of the best ideas ever, 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 ever. We're going to the water next. Are you ready? No, I got a great idea. When we get on the water, I talk for 20 minutes, non-stop. Instead of me talking, we're going to play music. I came up with a song that you guys are going to love. It's one of the best. It's on a loop. It non-stop. It plays for 20 minutes. Are you ready? You're going to love this idea. Nobody wanted to do it yet today. This could be the group that wants it. I have a good feeling. Here we go. Association, the Metropolitan District Commission, the, uh, the uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation, 86 miles, companies lined up on either side from Cambridge to Boston, dumping in all their fuel products, dumping in, you know, Crayola crayon? They were the biggest offender. They were dumping their dyes in, they or were. making crayons. They were. It was awful. They were dumping anything they could. People just drive their cars in there and just leave it there. They cleaned it up year after year after year, and we are proud to say, in the last four years, this river went from a D minus water level to an A minus, which means you are looking at the cleanest urban waterway in the United States. It went number one. So we went from last place to first. As a great man once said, Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first to last, shake and bake. So, now today when we go in the water, if you could splash, don't 
don't get nervous. You rub it on the skin, it's like a chemical peel. Look how soft that skin is. It's unbelievable. Look at that. I used to swim in this thing when I was a kid. Come on, nothing happened to me. Your mother would come over here. All the mothers would line up, grab us by our ears. Sometimes it wasn't even our own ear. It was one floating on our head. Now we come over to the hospital and they pump your stomach and you'll be right back the next day. Okay? Yeah. We did not great. But, so, this river we're going to go with next. You know why they call the Charles River? Captain John Smith sailed 1614 for one year all over New England. For Rhode Island, Connecticut, and all over Massachusetts. Because back to King Edward of England, we're going DEFCON 4. That is because the bridge is opening up for a boat. So, King, uh, Captain John Smith goes back to the King Edward. He goes, here's all these maps of New England. King Edward had a son called Prince Charles. A 15-year-old kid looks at the map of this river and says, I'm going to name this after myself. And that's how they get the Charles River. Now fast forward, in 1940, they created what they call the Charles River, uh, the Charles Regatta, the largest rowing competition in the world. Today, 12,000 rowers from around the world come in, from Olympians to pro athletes, to high schoolers to middle schoolers, to college level as well. It runs on the third weekend of October. And it brings in about $40 million of revenue in three days. It's insane. Now, why am I telling you that? You know that King Ch uh, Prince Charles became King Charles? on 1630 or so, and guess what happened to him? He got beheaded for treason. He got beheaded. What's the nickname of the Charles Regatta? Anybody know? The head of the Charles. That's how you get it. That's how you get the name of it. That's exactly how you get the name of it. Yeah, that's how you get the name of it. Yeah. Okay, so we started from the Museum of Science, right? It's coming back up to your left. But what you didn't know, that statue you were sitting in front of, that's my mother-in-law. That's Jean, okay? She's from Vermont. Now, here we are, we're back home in Cambridge where there's begging lives, okay? You're gonna find, in Cambridge, you're gonna find MIT, what's another college? Nope, not Harvard, Harvard. Now, if you guys wanna go on the Harvard, you must get yourself a red sweater, you tie it over your shoulders and a knot, and there's a muffin, muffin, and a skeeter. That's your dark down there, okay? You got MIT, Harvard, Cambridge College, and Leslie College, but there's one more college people don't talk about, or don't know about. Right across over to your right hand side, you're gonna see the Holt International Business School. That is the largest college in the world for teaching languages. It is. In the world. They have a hundred locations. From Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, to, to Beijing, to Moscow, to Tokyo, to Turkey, to Switzerland, to Sweden, to Guatemala, Portugal, Spain, Brazil, Italy, and India, just to name a few. If you speak a foreign language, let's say you want to be an interpreter, you go to the Olympics, you move to that city for two years and become an interpreter. You teach whatever language you speak. My four kids all graduated college, and they used this program for one year. They didn't go here, though. They went, because they speak fluent Italian. My wife is Italian, they taught them all Italian, right? So they went to Florence, Italy, after they went to college, and they taught English Take in Italy. Take a at Florence Stop University for like one year. What an experience, right? Now let me know when you're ready, Tim. Ready? Okay, here we go. Okay, he's letting you go. Yep. So the model of the school is breaking down barriers to languages. Yep. Breaking down barriers. What's the barrier about East West Germany? The Berlin Wall. <laughs> it's right in front of that building you see. Let me not know that. So Cambridge was once known, known as Newtown in 1630. It became Cambridge after Cambridge, England in 1636. Harvard University, uh, down at Harvard. Have you seen the statue of John Harvard? It's called the Statue of Three Lies. Line number one, that statue of John Harvard, it's not him. They never had a portrait of them. They have no idea who it is. Line number two, Harvard was founded in 1636, not 1638. And line number three, John Harvard was a founder. It was the Puritans in 1638. All right? So now we're gonna bang it right here, and now I'm gonna show you the Holt International Business School, which, by the way, they founded the school in Stockholm, Sweden. That's where it comes from. Stockholm, Sweden. What else comes from Stockholm, Sweden? A furniture company. Oh. Ikea. Yeah. There's a reason why I said that. First of all, take a look as you make this turn. Look to your left. You see a slab of concrete with a cartoon on it. That's a piece of the Berlin Wall right there. Right there. Did you know that, Miss Cambridge? See, you have to get out. Okay, so. <laughs> remember I said Ikea comes from uh, Stockholm, Sweden? I'm convinced. Ikea built this building. See that green box to your left? All the parts of that building was delivered, delivered by FedEx from Ikea. One guy built that building in one hour using only one hex key. Six one thousand a box of glue.
Now coming up to your right, check this out. You ready? And you kids, look to your right. It is the, one of the top 10 skateboard parks in America. Skateboard park. I call these kids over here children of the corn. <laughs> now one kid can land a trick. All they do is fall. Most of these kids are from North Carolina. Okay, so. All right. Let's go to safety. As your boat captain on board, let's go to safety drills. Large life jackets over your head with the yellow tags over 90 pounds. Above my head, under 90 pounds with the red tags. Two life rings. Life ring in the back. Life ring above Tim's head. Fire extinguisher in the back. Fire extinguisher underneath the seat with a CO2 cartridge in case of the fire the motor goes right out. Uh, do not stand up on the vessel unless otherwise advised. If you fall in, well, because I'm the captain, there's a lot of paperwork. And then I have to put a pair of speedos on to rescue you. You don't want to see that, okay? <laughs> Here we go, I hope it works this time. Please work, please work, please work. Get this. Get this. Here we go, I'm so nervous. Please. It's that simple. Yep. What he did was he converted it from a truck to a duck by putting it in that uh, D1. That's not the answer. He handily pulls up the next bits of a cover that's underneath this boat in the back. Now it's spinning. Now, how do we know that this river is that clean? Look to your left. See the seagulls? That means it's great fishing here. Not I'll show you double press of black coomer, coom, coom, uh, coomerans. We have American bald eagles out here now for the first time in over 75 years. 31 species of fish. Look at all, that's how, you see what the, see the state police boat right there? Remember that noise we heard about that siren? He's waiting to go underneath those two bridges. Those two light colored brown bridges. That state police boat will end up in the Boston Harbor. He's in 23 feet of water. And then it gets dropped down to 19 feet to go to the Atlantic Ocean. Which, by the way, the Boston Harbor is the cleanest uh, harbor in America. Number one harbor in America. That being said, on July 2nd and the 3rd, I've taken my boat up here many times on July 4th. But you can't come up on July 4th. You come up on July 2nd or 3rd. Once you go in this direction, you can't turn it around. You are locked in here for two and a half days. So what I do is I go all the way up the river. I'm going to show you where we drop our anchors way up. Once you're here, another boat will come up and lock on to the side of you. Another boat. It just goes like this. So let's say I take you guys up my boat and you say, oh, so, oh I got to go home. Well, you got two options. You swim, or there's so many boats are set to lock up, you ask permission to walk onto their vessel. Now, I don't have a problem with that, but I have two rules. Remove your shoes. Number one, you cannot come on my boat with shoes. No way. All right? Two, because you scuff them. And, and makes the boat look lousy. Secondly, stop, sit down, have a drink, have something to eat. For two and a half days, I cook nonstop. I don't go to sleep. I just cook for two and a half days. I cook steak tips and hamburgers or hot dogs and chicken, vegetarian meals, pasta, oysters, lobsters. I have kayaks coming by. I hand them hot dogs and hamburgers. I be able to sit and I make drinks for people. I play instruments out here. It's one big block party. There's over 700 boats. It's so much fun. It's a blast. It really, it's, it's wonderful. Now, if anybody wants to, who wants to stay in Boston for free? For free. With, uh, with water views. The free food, a gym, a basketball court, and a library. And there's a bar, though, in every room. And at night time, you got a roommate that holds you and tells you that they love you. You see that brick building with the gray roof on the top? That's a Suffolk County jail. Okay? That, that's, you know, that's for free. That's a jail. Now, I've never been in it, but according to my two brothers, they say it's beautiful inside. <laughs> Easy, they work there. Okay. Now, take a look in front of us. This. See that bridge? We just drove over it. At the truck. Now we're driving underneath it as a duck. You realize this is the biggest thing you guys have ever done in your lifetime. This is it. After today, you picked up. Okay? Now, the best part of this job for me, on a personal note, the best part of this job, 100% is the best part of this job, asking this one question Is anybody on board a United States veteran? Thank you, sir, for your service. Uh, the reason why I asked that question, sir, look above your head. So anytime we get a veteran on board, we'll ask them if they would like to sign the top of the roof. Because the duck boats were built during World War II. Who built the duck boats? The women known as Rosie and the Revenants. T stands with the sign. Fourth letter of the alphabet, fourth year of the war, 1942. U, utility amphibious vessel. The K is front wheel drive. 
upside down, and the W is double red axle. Who built in the women of World War II? Most of the riveters. Now, what did you do with your kids if you went to work? Six million women. You brought them to the factories, and that's where the rules and regulations of daycare was created here in World War II. Would you like to sign the roof? Oh, absolutely. I'd love this one eventually to sign. That's part of the job for me. Right. Now, where are you from, sir? Georgia? Jersey? Yeah. Okay, don't put Yankee or something weird up there, okay? Because we got an eye on you. Pass that back to this gentleman back there. Awesome stuff, okay? Send anything you want, brother. Anything you want. You can do it. You sound that you want, because there could be kayaks out here. I want to make sure they're safe so they can't see us. Now, look at that gentleman. That's the best sight I've ever seen. Every day I love seeing this. Uh, this is so cool. Now, we're on open water. Here's what happened. Tim is very particular. He doesn't like driving on the water. For something, he's got this thing about driving. So, I need some help. Would you want to drive a duck boat? You want to drive? <laughs> that volunteers? Yeah, let's start with you. Come on up here. Hey, sir, thank you for your service to your country and as well as your family, okay? Come on up here, take that care. All right, all right, now, if you take a look over to your left hand side. Well, uh, there's the marker right there, right there behind you. All right. If you see that glass building over there to your left with the stripe in the middle, that's Massachusetts General Hospital, MGH. That compares up to New York Presbyterian, the Cleveland Clinic, the Mayo Clinic, and, uh, let me see, uh, and many others, but... This hotel, this hospital is the first one to use face transplant surgery, limb surgery, x-ray. And who's ever heard of Gaston's ether? Ether. You guess it's not true? Why do you think in April we celebrate the ether bunny? Wow. Hey, what's your name? Was it Caitlin? Hey, oh, Hazel. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Awesome. Hey, Hazel, what do you want to be when you get older? She just sent a duck boat cap. That's what she said. Did you say marine biologists or duck boat captain? They sound so familiar. Oh, okay, they sound very familiar, okay. Come over here, Hazel. I got some stickers for you. Good job, now get out of the seat, you're making me nervous. Okay. <laughs> Who else wants to drive? Come on over here, bring the camera with you. I'll take a picture of you. Uh, uh, oh, she's gonna come up first? Okay, hold on, hold on one second, young man. Right. By the way, look at that bridge in front of us. Uh, well, you come up here, Bruce. Uh, you want to here we go. Come on up here. <laughs> uh, you want to come up here? Okay, you jump here. Here we go. See that bridge in front of us? That's called the Henry Watchett Longfellow Bridge. But we don't call it that. You know what we call it? Look directly in the middle. They look like salt and pepper shakers. They call it the salt and pepper bridge. That's its nickname. Again, everything in Boston is a nickname. Hey, who are you, by the way? What do you want to be when you get older? Duck bump, Captain. I'm emotional. Yeah, look this way. Give me a nice smile. There we go. Oh my god, you can be on the cover of Duck Magazine. Yeah, you win an iPhone. Alright. Uh, uh, now, this bridge, by the way, was built in 1907. There you go, brother. Uh, young, young lady in the back, come on up here. Over to your right is Cambridge. Right? Now, what do you do in Cambridge? Okay. The reason why I ask is that behind those buildings, come on up here, young man. Sit right in that seat. Is that uh, I'm not about a mile in? Right here. Sit right in that seat. It's called Technology Square. It's the largest area in the world for biotechnology. Companies such as EMC, Lotus, Biogen, Weather Laboratory, Drake Labs, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Genzyme, Facebook, Cotskins Institute, Stem Cell Research, Alzheimer's, Dementia, and Space Exploration. This was originally going to be. NASA, Mission Control, Draper Laboratories invented the guidance system to follow rockets, JFK assassinated, Lyndon B. Johnson was in Texas. That's why it's the only reason why it's in Houston. This whole thing, all the way up, was going to be NASA, Mission Control. And who are you, by the way? What's your name? What is it? Isla? Uh, I L. How do you spell it? I L. I S L A H. Got it. Okay. Yes. No, that's how we pronounce it. Ah, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Hey, Ayla, look this way. Wait, ready? Oh, here we go. Oh my God! Look at this kid. Ayla, what do you want to be when you get older? She 
wants to be a worker. Okay, okay, that's a good job. That's a great job, Dad. Oh, yeah, working girl. Look at this. You get an iPhone 17. Okay, this is young. Okay, this is real. You get to keep that forever. And you got some stickers. You get all the color. Good job. No, you get the whole thing. Good job. North Carolina, you want to drive? Come on up here. Hey, take a look over to your right hand side. Bring your camera up, Dad. Uh, there's a brick building coming up. Take a picture. Take a picture. Come on, picture. Take a picture. Stop a brick open. building with the uh, slanted glass roof. That's a Dr. Edwin Land Laboratory. Dr. Edwin Land dropped out of Harvard University as a freshman. He was too smart for the school. He's brilliant. He had an IQ unbelievable. He drops out of school. He ends up with 32 doctor degrees, invented the polarization of light, sunglasses, instant film, the Polaroid camera, the land camera. He has the second most invention to patch register in the world. 32 doctors, he never finished Harvard. Neither did Matt Damon, neither did Bill Gates or Zuckerberg. Can you imagine if these people finished college how successful they could have been? Think about that. Hey, wait a minute. Come over, who's this kid? What's your name? What is it? Lucas, come over here, Lucas. Here's some stickers for you. Hey, what do you want to be, Lucas, when you get older? A policeman. Oh, well, we got extra stickers for that. Okay, now, anybody else want to drive? Are we good? All right, good. I'll make it here. Okay, stick it since you're local. Yeah. If you get a speeding ticket, hand that to a police officer. Okay, there we go. I'll send you. Now, take a look behind that building. You see that great building in the distance behind that brick building? It's got a bunch of stubs on the roof. You know what that is? That's Moderna. That's Moderna, it's right there. Take a picture. Yeah. Stop the video. Button. Okay. Now, Megan's sensitive local. Kayaking is a lot of fun. Right there. If I have a kayak, okay, that's the worst possible situation you can put yourself into the water. We train with the Coast Guard to rescue. We do a lot of rescues out here. You want to be very careful because this river is controlled by floodgates. They can pump out of 1.2 million gallons a minute, right? Yep. So people get trapped down there, and that's what we tell people. You're going to kayak, stay out of the middle, and don't go down there. Too many boats out here. It's insane. I want to make sure you, a lot of you don't know that. Okay, where's MIT? Right, look to your right, you can see a building. It's got a big golf ball on the roof. See that white golf ball? That's a Doppler weather radar system. See it? That's MIT. They invented the World Wide Web by Dr. Lee. They also invented the microwave. They have also invented wind tunnels, GPS, in 1982 for the military. Global positioning system. This, uh, this goes with raises. Uh, what else did they invent? Uh, the microwave, I think I said, oh! That soup is just fun to say. They invented it. Now look up that river. You see that red triangle? What are we looking at towards that area? No, not for anybody. We're looking at a neighborhood called the Fence. Now, um, who's ever heard of the Freemasons? I'm a Freemason. In Freemasonry, we speak a few languages. One of them is Old English. If you go to England right now, there are neighborhoods called the Fence. Fence means marshland. If you go to England right now, there are neighborhoods called because they flood their marshland. They call it the fence. That's fourth Fenway Park. That's how you get it. Now, a lot of you don't know that. That's why I call it Fenway Park. Remember that building we drove by? We saw the reflection of ourselves. That's a John Hancock Tower. The tallest building in New England. See that building? No, we nicknamed it the world's largest PlayStation 4. That's a PS4. Yes, that's the largest PS4. Now, look to the side of it. You see the round ball? It's tier. That's this. The hat show. So there's a stage inside of here. So July 4th, all the boats come up after this bridge. We drop our anchors. We go side to side. 700 boats side to side. And back, like 10 rows back. So you get the boats and the Boston pumps. Then, about a quarter mile right back there, is we put three 75-foot long fireworks barges. So you get fireworks, boats, music. This tradition of the Boston pumps Dates back to the year of 1929 with the conductor called Arthur Friedman. And another conductor took it over. Who's ever heard of the great conductor John Williams? If you haven't heard of him, he wrote the Mr. E.T., Star Wars, Harry Potter, Jurassic Park, Schindler's Smith. Now, my favorite love story of all time, an incredible love story, the kids will love it, Jaws. What a movie. I don't know if you guys ever seen Jaws, but it's, it's kind of like... For the kids, it's like Finding Nemo, but on steroids, okay? So, has anyone ever done a July 4th in Boston? 
In the last two years, we have enough. This year, we finally had it, but it wasn't as spectacular as yesteryear. But it'll get stronger again. Uh, I've been out here many times, so you know what I'm going to do? It's kind of cool, actually. Uh, let's pretend it's July 4th. It's at night time. It's 10 o'clock. Shut up the fireworks. We're on a boat. I can't provide the fireworks. Tim was supposed to bring the CD of the classical music they play. So now I have to improvise today. You want to play some classical music? Are you ready? All right. I play classical music. I also play country and uh, deep southern blues. I play rock. I play many instruments, and one of them has to be a harmonica. It's the easiest thing to play on a duck boat, okay? This way I'm not hitting people with a guitar, all right? <laughs> all my four kids play music. They read and write. I cannot do that. It takes another level of learning. It really is. It takes a whole another level of learning. I play by ear. It's something I learned as a kid. I have no idea where I got it from. None of my brothers and sisters play music. I discovered this as a young kid. I could just pick up an instrument and just play some, and they don't even know the note. I couldn't tell you any notes. My kids, I sent them to school for music. Because it's something that you can read about music, pretty much mathematics. I just memorized it. I play a bunch of other songs, but here's a song I'll play, particularly if I It's like 15 seconds long. Growing up in Boston, 
had a trouble making gin at seven years old. I was getting in trouble. That was just this me. So my father calls his cousin. Who's his cousin? His name is Buddy LaRue. Buddy LaRue owned the Red Sox. He was on the good side of the track, so I was on the bad side of the track. So my first job at seven years old was cleaning dugouts at Fenway Park. I became a ball boy. I became a scorekeeper. I cut the grass. I gave tours. I was a mascot. So for many years, I did a lot of stuff with the Red Sox. So, so my family has these. So they've been in my family for years and years. Okay. Now in a moment, you're going to see this. The Bunk Hill Monument. Straight ahead. The Bunk Hill Monument. Does anybody know what other monument this looks like? Yes. The Washington Monument? Who says Washington Monument? You're wrong. Because the Washington Monument looks like this, because ours is older by 15 years. Thank you very much. So we invented monuments. Okay, so. Right. Now, I'm going to talk about the Battle of Bunker Hill. That's where the Battle of Bunker Hill took place on June 17, 1775. And get ready, fish on the black flag. Thank you, fish on! on June 17. How do we remember June 17? It's our area code, 617. That's how we get it. Battle of Bunk Hill, run by four men. Here's your partner, John Stark, William Prosco, and Major General Dr. Joseph Warren. Now, to the right of that monument, by the way, out of 2,000 British soldiers on that hill, 1,034 casualties. Out of 4,000 militia, roughly four to 600. But it never took place on Bunk Hill. It took on a place called Breeds Hill. Bunk Hill was already occupied with British soldiers, and it stepped away from the um, cannons. Now, to the right of that, if you're in Boston tomorrow, go check this out. USS Constitution, oldest commissioned warship afloat in the world. Not in America, but in the world. The oldest commissioned ship in the world that's not in the waters in England called the Victory. This is 1797. If you're over 18, you have to have a picture ID. It's all free. It's awesome. Trust me on this. And by the way, we are proud to say, for the first time in history since 1797, after this past January, we have a female commander in the United States Constitution. And she was on a duck boat. It was very cool. Uh, I didn't get to meet her. She was on another duck boat in front of me. But it's kind of cool to say that she came on these. And she's the first female commander. She's an awesome, straight up, phenomenal woman. Right? Now, that being said, I got some very sad news for you people. But you adults, are you ready to hear some sad news? Oh boy. I'm gonna rip the band-aid off. Here we go. What's the one thing you know about Sam Adams? Oh. What does everybody say? Take a trip. Bear. Take a trip. Well, let me Stop tell you Here's Sam Adams. This guy never, ever, ever made beer. Never nope. happened. No. Nope. Never made that. At 14 years old, you know what he was doing? He was a freshman at Harvard University. Went to Harvard in 17, he graduated in 1740, gets his master's. On top of that. Then, right after graduation, you know what he does? He becomes a tax collector for the British. Yep. For five years, a British tax collector. Guess how much money he collected from the Bostonians? Zero. Why? He was building up loyalty. He was building up an army right in front of the British. They had no clue what he was doing. He starts his Sons of Liberty. So now why do people think he made beer? Because his father, his father never made beer. His father never made beer. What did his father do? He owned the company and sold malt to people making beer. His father died and his mother made him take over the business. After six months, people called him Sam the Maltster. He started losing respect. It drove him crazy, so he had to come to go bankrupt. So he never made beer. But, on another note, I met him, okay? But here's another indication. Right on the ball, you know what it says? Incorporated in 1984. That's a good indication. The guy was an American Revolutionary War hero. He never made beer. Like he, like he had time making beer during the American Revolution. All right, let's hear it for Tim getting us out of this area. <laughs> okay, yeah, I want to test it really quickly. Um, during coronavirus in 2020, I was what they call a non-essential worker. Seven months living down the Cape, my four kids moved out of the house, so it's just me. My wife was an essential worker. So every day, you know what she said to me? 14 hours, she'd leave the house. She'd go, have a good day, non-essential worker. And I would say, have a good day, essential worker. Now, there's nobody listening on the Cape in the winter, so what do I do? I said, go in the beard like Tom Hanks and Castaway. I'm losing my mind. All right? Nobody's around, so what do I do? 
I'm, after two months, I said, that's it. I have to do something. Keep me occupied. I go to an animal rescue league. I didn't even tell my wife. She came home, and I got this little guy. Uh, his name is Tucker. Uh, he's a Harlem Lop rabbit. Why am I showing you this? Because I had to start having conversations with him. Now it's getting weird, okay? Him and I are best friends. So I didn't realize that rabbits like music, loves music. I play guitar to him, I sing to him, we play music together, right? So here we are hanging out one day. And one day we're watching a movie called Bohemian Rhapsody. He loves TV. <laughs> so it's him and I, he's sitting on my lap and he's snoring, this little baby rabbit snoring. And all of a sudden that song comes on. We will, we will rock you. He jumps off my lap, a little tuckman starts doing this. I swear to God he was doing this. So it was then I realized I must write a song that will change the world. Oh, it's boy. called We Will We Will Quack You. And we're gonna sing it together at the end. Oh, we're gonna sing it, okay? Yes, we will. You're gonna sing it and you're gonna like it, okay? <laughs> when I'm home, for seven months of a rabbit, we were playing cards, we were playing Monopoly, us two, we were hanging out. Uh, he was all the time, he's much better <laughs> than me. So anyways, I bring nothing to the table. So anyways, the reason why I like doing that is I like having fun with my guests. At this time, I like telling people to start checking your seats. People lose things all the time because they're coming in from landing. Yeah. What do you think the number one item on the duck boat lost is? No children. So if you if you lose anything to get that child back, it's a website called www.ebay.com, okay? <laughs> when we come in from landing, stay seated. And that way I can get down the aisle, stand at the bottom of the gate. Those stairs can be wet. Take your time going down. That's why I stand at the bottom. Hey, you want to sit the rabbit taught me? This. That's pretty much what I've done in my lifetime, okay? Take a job. Take a job. You really have to do a job. Yes, I worked at kids, all right? I worked at kids middle school, high school, college. That's what I did. I worked at kids in college.